I hear someone use an olive oil to play Mobile Legends. I never think that someone will ever do that in my entire life. Baby powder makes your hands slick. Mine is slippery. So you are unable to use your skill properly then? It's the fastest moving hands. <laughs> it's that fast. My so you cannot even control off. it. <laughs> okay. Okay, but yeah. We're going into the battle peak phase here. The most crucial moment of the <laughs> match here. But yeah. Smart Omega Empress going big on error. Smart Omega directly batting over the Diggy and Novaria. And they haven't recovered from the jokes that she's making. Guinevere and Ola with 1-1 one, one directly been taken care of in the head of the Gatron era. So they are preparing based on the heroes that they are expecting and don't want to face inside of the Land of Dawn. Okay, and going into the third part of the first banning phase. I think it would be nice though, banning of maybe like one or two um, marksmen that they can use. Um, maybe Bruno or maybe Aerithal, it would be nice. But then again, banning off the Fredrin is actually a very good thing because we've never known that maybe it's one of the um, one of the tankier parts of the junglers will be very nice. And if from the side of Megatron era, would also be very nice if if you want to ban off maybe a support hero or maybe one of the junglers too, and more to a targeted ban or maybe a respected hero. Uh, so it's I didn't possible it. to be do, to be I done like that, but yeah, Valentina is the one that getting banned from the Gatron era. So they are respecting the, the possibilities coming from the Smart Omega oh, to actually way. denying the pick here. But Matilda is still being picked here because we know that how powerful Matilda for diving in with the circling eagle with the dashes. It's just like creating so much thing, especially when it's when you want to play quite aggressive in the early uh, in the in the early game. So uh, for Begetron era, with this kind of hero that is being presented by Smart Omega, what is their their response regarding this? Are they going to be going with the drop that they are prepared preparing for going against Smart Omega, or are they just like okay, I, I don't I don't see Matilda as a problem, so I just want to pick maybe going for a mage first or maybe going for a marksman but Bashia directly big big long with the Bruno in the head of Bigatron era. Okay, using these picks it would be a quite big of a challenge and at the same time a great support going in from the side of Bigatron era because one is tanky and one is, yeah also one of the secure late game heroes is actually uh, uh, in their hands. But at the same time, if you use the Boxia, I would Thank really like to see show. more to a typical support hero to put in hey, as their roam because usually a combination of a alive. tanky jungler is actually a healer. Yeah, and I think like with that, with that being said, with the Lilia and also Bruno that is being picked here by the Sarf Smart Omega they really need to respond quite fast. I mean, like, we know that how fast Lilia is with the clear of the minions. So, what kind of thing that they will prepare in regarding this? Matilda, Lilia, it's early, early movement coming from the side of Smart Omega. We get your era. We know that Sini is using tons of hero, even can use the assassin's type, uh, fighter type, even a marksman inside of the mid lane. So, the response regarding that is actually to the Farsha. When we know the AoE is big, and big enough to push yes. back Brody with an uh, explosion of the Fender Airstrike. Mm -hmm, but at the same time, needs to be very, very careful because once the Fender Airstrike is opened up, you are going to have to stay in that place and it would have to be a strategical place to be in. But also, Bigotron Air's lineup for the first three heroes, I actually really liked it because it will pop off as a very team by every century the the and then again the second banning. banning phase has to open also not to mention that banning of the joy is actually pretty nice because knowing this part omega um it would have a great combination co combination of where the in and out moments of the mobility of the joy would be uh, very very helpful 
But not to mention that securing the Matilda can also help maybe after activating the Black Shoes from mm -hmm. the Lilia can also move back because it's one of the quick movements for that hero but a low mobility a after that mm -hmm. but then again from smart Jeez omega man. bending out the paquito so the Pikatron era wouldn't able to take that is a very smart move for me because they already give out so much damage from just two heroes from the farsha they use and also to bruno yeah. so it would be a great thing to do so i think like there's a possibility here with all of the picks and also the pants that is being done but yo banning over another hero might be uh better here for this one they might be trying to battle for that maybe going for the jungle because i do feel like if you're going ag against uh a very good hero with the high mobility potential like a Bashia, you need to also have that kind of thing. Like Martis is still available. And I do feel with the smartest Omega lineup, Marty is actually gonna be perfect. And able to dive in, able to try to contest the Ferrari strike right? with the Ashura Aura along with the uh, Mortal Coil. Actually, it's a good option. So I think like it's a high possibility for them to go with that hero but banning from smart omega after looking at nula that is being banned by bigotron era is it gonna be another okay oh, better than that. they're just respecting the, the hero that can be used by uh by the xp lane okay for actually i was thinking that they were going to ban of the a terrorist would be actually very nice but then again it yeah is actually it now. is it is open now. It is. The reason I actually going to be perfect one for for yeah. for them, right? <laughs> the actually, it's going to be very good for them. So I think <laughs> like <laughs> like yeah. they are preparing for that one. But Minotaur, Minotaur is the one that's being picked here by the side of Bigetron Arrow. So I think like they are preparing something with the heal along with the Minoan Fury to contest. So whenever did Matilda diving and using the circling eagle, mm -hmm. the 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 Minotaur will be like, okay, come on, I'm ready with the Minotaur Fury. So it's gonna be a good setup here for Bigetron Era. It means they still can go with Teresa, or even if they want to go with another kind of hero, it's still a huge possibility. Even Axebox at this point is still a good option to be honest, because with the Axebox, with the Lost Insanity, it can go directly to the backside no, and chasing no, over the Brody or even going for that one. But there you go, Akai is directly being picked along with the Axebox and he had a smart Omega. So what is the answer from Bigetron Era? Bigatron Era, I think, is one of the heroes that can melt down the Viraga armor from export. And then again, either Yu Jong or maybe a Tursla would be a very nice pick. Oh, but then Arlet. again, it's an Arlet they are securing. Damage and mobility, they have increased that also. So it would be a great combination where it played out as a final sweep from the Arlet and a very good knock up from the Minion Fury from the Min Initiate. It's counter initiate. But yeah, we will just jump to the first game of Pass of the Series. This is gonna be Smart Omega Empress going versus Begetron Era. So Philippines representative along with Indonesian representative. Don't forget, put your hashtag in the comment sections below for supporting your favorite team. Okay, let's go going into the Land of Dawn. So far, so good. Two first hero mages trying to battle out in the first minion wave. But then again, from the Baksha, Vivo is very quick and handy on the farming. And Bray here trying to pick a sneak peek here. But mm -hmm. actually, they're just going to stick here on the side of the Little Wanderer. I, I mean, like, it definitely is going to be... Uh, fast. I mean, like, it's Matilda along with the Lilia. <laughs> it's gonna be a super fast coming from these two heroes to clear wave. But Tinzi, the potential with the Farsha is with the Ferro Strike, right? So if the Ferro Strike having a really good positioning, it's gonna be a true problem. But the presence from the Keishi using the Akai is actually gonna be a very good one. The Fumi is still trying to contest back Ooh. into the Ayanami, but not Ayanami being dived in by the side of Fifal. But Fifal unable to secure the kills, throwing some shells, but nope, nope, nope. Not Ayanami still survive from that one. Okay, I really like how 
uh, how Fumi tried to buy time. And even so, the expert didn't really get the chance to recall and needs to go back right now. Both EXP laners are down in the low and they need to reset that security quickly. Not to mention from the bottom lane trying to build in a, a lot of gold. Shinoa is actually had a bit of the advantage here with a bit of a gold plating. Mm -hmm. Definitely, it's gonna be a very huge uh, advantage for the Sinoa, but meanwhile, starting off this uh, objective station here, going directly towards this turtle okay. who is gonna be taking that one, Akashi, definitely with the heavy spin, along with the retribution, controlling Vival, but they are not stopping, they even try to dive into the side of Small Omega trying to push them back despite that they are not able to take any kind of thing and just wasting some time in the middle lane. Tanky tanky heroes, mm. both Matilda and the Akar tried to be the target but then again, in the early game, a block shield wouldn't give that much of a damage or even Chinzy were was able to follow up on that but then again, played slave, played cool, calm and collected and after this, Vival is actually trying to farm in, but Murray is quite aggressive and quite bold of uh, bold of her knowing that there is an escape tool for that. But it'll still be a risky move if one of the initiates from Bigatron era, like this right now, being stunned. Then again, Black Shoes are going to popping it up again with the heavy spin pinning down on Vival. But Ooh. the Feather Airstrike is too powerful, bursting Vival. down on the side of Backlight. But Vival needs to really run back for the hills. But Murray is being targeted right now, a flicker going on for defensive. But from Smart Omega, is still quite disciplined, not trying to chase down Vival. And not to mention the final slash is just going in and a first blood Nearly secured by Fumi, but on the other hand, in the front bottom lane, Shell has secured another kill, forcing Shinoa has to move back while Keishi is trying to sub in for the plating down there. Yeah, stopping the plating, stopping the movement here from the side of Vegetron. They are not plating too much. I mean, like, look at the goal difference. It's not none. None, literally none. They are having the same amount of gold despite the Bigatron able, Bigatron able to secure the first block along with the second kill right here. But here you go, Mirai with a circling eagle for using over Shell, but the backup is still there. Vivian is there. And there is another backup coming off as well. So Turtle has spawned inside of the light of dawn. So I think they want to prepare for this, but unfortunately, we are seeing the three members from the side of Bigatron going Ooh, for the Smart done. Omega side and not Ayanami, not gonna be able to survive that one. A feather airstrike forced to open up just to secure a kill. Keishi even has to move back. For me, it's quite an expensive skill to pop in in the early, but then again, Bigatron era pulls in the turtle to their side to secure that neutral objective that easily. Mm -hmm. Securing the gold plate in 50% of the gold plate, despite it's only like five seconds more to be left out, but the purple buff has been stolen by the side of Team Bigatron era. They are trying to get, picking up all of the golds, trying to pile it up, try to have the more advantage side. But Vivian, opening up the bushes here, trying to seek for position of Smart Omega. Smart Omega is like very disciplined. Whenever they know that it's not going good for their side, they just like, nope, not this time. We are gonna retreat. We are gonna try back again when we have a better positioning or better competition to fight back to the side of the Gatron era. I do agree on that. Seeing how they play out and very disciplined on what they hold out is quite good. Fumi being in the final slash, all right in the middle, one versus four with the heavy spin popping up and all the CC just going back. With the heavy Keishi. feather airstrike going initiating the back line, then again hasn't been able to take down that much, leaving only Keishi as being the one needed to respond. And even the Bruno is quite aggressive and trying to buy in the red buff and buying a lot of time and even pushing onto the second tire. Yeah, and I think for Bruno, uh, for Brody, the Sinoa really needs the penetration. Yeah. It, it can be coming from the Malevic Roar, even making over the Demon Hunter's world. Why? Because it's facing Abasha along with the Minotaur, but on the top lane, again, last insanity as a defense mechanism to try to clean the wave as soon as possible so the rest of the player from the Gator era can retreat nicely and disciplinedly. They are not allowed to take any objective. Look at that. 
We saw a lot of movement. We saw a lot of skill being used, but it's only for punishment and only three turrets so far that has been taken care of. And other than that, we can see from the top lane trying to burst on a lot of team fights, and a lot of people are actually up there trying to start in the turtle. But then again, BTR era has the momentum of securing down there. But then again, not Ayami trying to burn down onto the side of Cheesy, but on the side of the back side here, Heavy Spit popped up and oh. dived out. Then again, a resetting the turtle. So Fumi wouldn't get that much. But then again, Fivol is trying to find a way to well pick off the export but then again it's too too tanky and that is a risky move because they need to be on the move for the time that's why that neutral objective needs to be secured before the eighth minute and that neutral objective unable to be contested because smart omega was using all of the resources she knows uh ultimate Keishi's, not Ayanami, has been used before the objective already been taken care. So, uh, so it wasn't wasn't a clean idea coming from Smart Omega. They get era able to take the neutral objective because of that. But yeah, the movement coming from the Amor, it's making over the necklace of Durance because they know that they really need to stop the growth for this people along with the Vivian but look at the setup here for Rast Rack Heavy Spin is being done they are trying to set up another movement but retreating directly after seeing a potential movement and also follow up coming from the Gator era so right now Smart Omega are trying to play calmly they really want to try to drag this game into quite late game but I think that is not going to be a good deal here since they are facing a Vival a Bashia, a tanky hero, along with a Vivian here with the Minotaur. I think the counter initiation will be very huge, but look at that one Vivian coming in and that in the front. Keishi is very low, track to the side, but what will happen now? Because we are seeing the Sinoa receiving quiet some damage, being pushed back by the Fat Rat Strike, but the rest of the player from the Getron era still able to manage it back, not forcing it, not overdiving the movement towards Smart Omega. Agree on how they pulled into the late game, it wouldn't be a fair trade for Smart Omega. <laughs> knowing that Vivo will turn into the front line later on into the late game, but Amore and also not Ayami trying to find it away. Last Saturday trying to pop up again, taking it down, but Vivo is still too tanky and has been the way of being the first here. Final slash going in, oh. trying to pick in one person, but Ray is taken down by Sha, leaving only three people. Also oh, two, but Keishi needs to move back because of the Feather Airstrike is trying to scale up with that big of a damage. This is the moment you know that it is entering the middle game. I, I love how Fumi was playing and controlling the game. Like she's very, very aggressive, but also very tricky like she's playing a lot into the movement of smart omega like whenever they want to back off there's another slash coming from um Fumi and Fumi just like trying to play around with them but here you go circling eagle that is being contacted back a more able to secure child but in the exchange of Mirai and the lord need to be resided on this one child is a good trait here for the side of smart omega but from Bigatron era, they choose to reset that it's actually a pretty good thing. Because even though Murray is down, Keishi is still is still enough being tanky for their exchange of the front line. But then again, they need to play it calm. They need to play it like quite safe because then again maybe it would be nice dragging and maybe taking down the Lord in like another minute. Because it will be an enhanced Lord. It will have more benefits. It will have more big of a power to turn so but Chinzi opening up with the Feather Airstrike and a Black is oh. trying to pop in again with the final slash and even the last insanity popping up and taking down the Farsha but then again Keishi putting down on Shell here with the Minion Fury popping oh. in again but Keishi is too powerful finding a nice way of Shell and also Vivian can move back but they're still in a get go here trying to find in a way freeing out the minion here but okay Fumi trying to pull in the final slash 
didn't get anyone. Mirai. Play it safe. But then Ooh. again, the Bruno is too powerful, and this is getting brutal. I mean, like the Malefic Roar, Berserker's Fury's damage is just there, sis. It's just there. But you know what? Keiji is actually doing a really great job previously with the heavy spin, focusing on Chao. But the thing is, there is no follow-up damage. Mm -hmm. If there is a follow-up damage, no I more. think it's going to be a different story for the side of Smart Omega. They might be controlling game at this moment. But 3 to the 9 here, to 12 here, the side of the light of dawn. It's still a pretty tight game. So far, I think like for today, this is the, 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 the longest game without tons of Parrots being taken care of. I mean, like fighting over the first lord is also a thing here because they know how important the barrier and also the setup into taking this objective. Okay, but resetting it three times was <laughs> quite good. It is. Yeah. They just don't want to lose the chance for taking this one because they know. Look at the, the turrets. They're still collecting three or two. So it's a very disciplined. They, they are stopping the objective gameplay from the opponent's side. But I really like how BTR just tries to like pull into their side. But then again, not trying to force it out. It's because just buying know? time. Yeah, they want to bait out yeah. a few expensive skills from Smart Omega. But at the same time, they need to play it very, very safe because it's either buying out a uh, baiting out a expensive skill or just pounding it right now. Just like Keishi being saved by that movement from Matilda. But then again, Shell is trying to start in. We never know that which war is going to like burst out in any second. Uh, but then again, they need to play very very careful. They just like there is no commitment from Shell. Shell's just like okay, I'm just gonna poke this lord. I'm just gonna like try to pull out my volley skills so, so the, the stack will be there mm -hmm. but there is no commitment that i will make for this i want to pay it out because they know that will be a very good one they have the counter with the Minoan fury with the basha with the tortoise puissance here it's just a legit discipline from Smart Omega along with Begator era, but there you go. Okay. I think they will try to open up the war here. The last insanity has been popped, but look at that on Pumi taking care for not Ayanami, but Keishi alone mm. on the side, using the heavy skin. But there is no more Keishi because it's been taken care of in the hand of Shell, but there is no more movement again because the Lord oh. has been taken care of in the hand of people, and they are not stopping there because Mir Wei will be the next target. Shinoa still using the Thought Pack memory to get some kill, but people is actually pretty low, but Shinoa has been taken care of. Damn, that plate is very, very nice on how you know that the last insanity popped up was actually a very good thing, but Sally, that damage wasn't big enough given. And how the Akai tried to force it, tried to pin down Shell, but Sally, there isn't any follow-up damage to take down Cell. But the, what happened is because of the Feather Airstrike, Keishi is taken down and even if this how Vivo was so precise on getting the Lord they have made that very very clear that Smart Omega wouldn't get this neutral objective and even has secured a few kills from the side of Bigatron era trying to start in again Amore has to be very very careful because you do not want to be in the frontliner here knowing that the Lord is trying to barge in taking uh, taking the siege in the bottom lane. Yeah. And now the Lord that is still marching into the 15 minutes of the game here. Big Getron still marching with all of the members as well. They want to bait out something. But Fumi diving in with a very good movement right there. Last Insanity will be collecting some of the players from Big Getron era. But slap down happened towards Fumi. But FIFA is not stopping that. The Ray is still there. But the damage coming from Sin Z along with Chao is just that. Look at that one. Not Ayanami. Still having that immortality. Well, Viva still rolling to the back and trying to defend the movement coming from the side of Smart Omega. Okay, invading the high ground is quite different here and even securing a mega kill after invading all of that again. But Viva is trying to start in that even the Feather Airstrike is used to zone out again. But with the last insanity trying to pop up again, Chinzi 
is being here in the one, trying to find in again. Keishi here, trying to pop in again, trying to save, but not Ayama's immortality has been popped off. Needs to go back. Even Keishi, that tanky needs to be resetting again because it is too powerful. Circling Eagle trying to beat into the beside of Vigatron era, but then again, Shell is too powerful. That damage is just nasty right here. It is a nasty movement. It is a nasty thing here coming from the side of Vigatron era. Again, Chin Z using the Winter Truncheon here on the list, but look at that one, not Ayanami using the last inside to try to pop up, try to giving a punishment towards Vigatron era, but not Ayanami is the one that's being punished despite that Vivian is the exchange for smart omega side but still the minion is there they're able to secure two base turrets and half of the hp of the base itself so we get an error right now leading by gold leading by movement the lord the second lord appear in the light of dawn as a merchant and they didn't even wait for the 18 minute mark so it's just like okay i don't want to wait poke, yeah think. They just want to poke, it will be the same thing, the same strategy. But I am going to count how many lords that they're trying to walk, move, and back here. <laughs> okay, we can see from the item build, it's actually quite balanced here. Even though Bigatron era has more full lead here. But then again, we can also see the Arlet has put on the Thunder Belt and also a few. Uh, defense items and even the Bruno has set up for the crit and it is in full build so that's why we know why Bigatron era was so powerful just onto that marksman the problem is you need that good of a positioning not to be taken up or even blasted down from not a yummy but then again BTR trying to budge in again forcing that last insanity to pop off and even no not single virago armor is trying to pop in again keishi trying to jump in but from the side of fumi and also vivian needs to be very careful not to mention that Murray tried to initiate onto the side of btr era but then again the heavy spin and also the deny retribution didn't really get but shinoa is swiped away with the final slash with the feather airstrike trying to pop in again with the minion fury getting in onto the side of three people but even the more need to move back Fumi leaving only one person but even not a Yami needs to move back regain that uh, health and also that Viraga armor because the Lord is coming in Lord coming in look at that one Keishi trying to hold it up last insanity giving plenty of damage but the Lord still going on still there Vivian trying to dive in Keishi almost been picked off right there but look at the Matilda they're trying so hard to stop the movement from Bigetra and they did the clinic of the minions the presence that they are giving the movement and even the punishment towards Bigetra era are they going to be able to survive this one not Ayanami still using plenty of things plenty of skills to stop and be ball oh, be pushed back here back. but the minion is there though are they going to be trying to go all oh. in and focus over the base because I think that will be a best option, but FIFA is the one that being picked up. But the base, oh, 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 the minion is still there, though. The minion is still there, yeah. but no, but without FIFA, they I don't think that they will go for it. But if they force to budge that in, smart, I know, right? smart Omega can actually take on the tides. But knowing that Bigatron era needs to play that of a disciplined game, they need to hold in back, trying to find a good way to. Uh, secure uh, this win because if once the tides are turned it will be a very expensive game it is because it's 20 minutes but i thought with one kick maybe or two kick coming from chow towards the base it might be over for it's just, omega i think it's just too far how the export tried all going mm. all in bursting down with the last and insanity. the clearing of the minion yeah. because of that minion was cleared that wagon minion in the end is actually uh the key of bigatron era not trying to force it in but then again with that much of a burst even the viraga armor from not ayami is just chipped down like that oh eight into six here 20 mi 21 minutes into the game and it's 40 seconds for the third floor to appear inside of the land of dawn sky of the guardian helmet in the hand of fumi with three one and ten with 13 participation, over 18 totals. I think like Vivian have a really good combination. Like so far, uh, Vivian Vumi was working really well here with both of them 
forcing Square Omega to try and bait them to use some skills. And Vivian was like, okay, I'm gonna try to stand back, wait for anyone that wants to jump in and try to punish the players. I, I bet like, this is 21 minutes, so everyone have the full item already. But going for the late game situation, it's all depend on how they are trying to open up a war. How is the setup? How they are counter reacting over that? Are they gonna be disengaging the war? Or they're gonna be forcing the war? Because this is gonna be a very important lore at this minute. Okay, Kinsey's uh, flicker is forced to pop up with a defensive move. Knowing that expensive information, mm -hmm. Smart Omega needs to move it very, very nice oh. and quickly. But even though it's actually a bit of a stun by Vivo being in the front line again, bursting up with the last insanity, popping up, didn't really get anyone right in the shell. Minir Fury popping up and a nice way of a Mirai. from the final slash taking on, leaving Smart Omega. Only four players left. But focusing on the Lord, one of their biggest damage dealers are actually being chased by the EXP lane from the Big Town era. It's actually going down here. A flicker forced to pop up as a defensive uh -oh. mode by Murray here. Immortality popping off again, trying to take him down. But with Vivian's support, Brody. it would be a very nice. But Shinoa, Shinoa is also taken down. Not to mention that it's a double kill in the Lord, but also securing that. Shinoa with the torn apart memory, trying to pop uh -oh. in. But then again, Fumi is just too bit of a tanky move and needs to move back, not to be too aggressive, but the immortality has been broken. It needs to be fixed right now. Knowing that it, it will be the last second here, the BT, uh, BTR could even push it in. Oh my god, this might be the end because uh, Keishi and Mirai... But I think like with Amor, Amor will be able to clear off the Minion wave pretty fast. But the Lord is marching right now. And it's still 20 seconds for Mirai and also Keishi to be turned back into the Land of Dawn. So it will be a hard pass for uh, not Ayanami. Last Insanity has been popped right here. Um, oh my god, not Ayanami has been taken care of. But oh my god, Sinoa and Cha is being able to be taken care of right here. They're exchanging one to another, but the beast is still there and the Lord helping them to secure the first game. Big Atron era, able to secure the first game of the best of three series right here. And we can see it's their winning moment for the first game, trying to secure in that first point. Mm. But a very clean sweep in the last minute of the game that we yeah. can see.